In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, some strategies, some common strategies for evaluating limits. And I've got a list of, uh, I've got several examples here, but I've got a list of five strategies you can use. And they roughly go in order from one to five, but not necessarily. Although number one is always try to evaluate. Um, lots of times you can just evaluate uh, an expression and that's the limit. There's no nothing else necessary. So always try that first. Uh, sometimes you need to expand and simplify expression because you might be getting like a zero over zero and, and it's called an indeterminate form. And if you have zero divided by zero, it doesn't necessarily equal one like any other number divided by itself equals. Um, you need to sometimes factor and see if the expression will simplify and then you can evaluate the limit. Uh, sometimes you need to find a common denominator. We'll take a look at an example of that on the uh, the second page. And then uh, the multiplying by a conjugate expression, I'll, I'll talk about that when we get into the, I believe that's the second last example on the on the next page. So um, let's start with a here. We're find, asked to find the limit of 3x squared minus 2x as x tends towards 2. Well, we can just substitute 2 in place of x here. And so 2 squared 4 times 3 is 12, and 2 times 2 is 4, and so 12 minus 4 is just 8. So there's nothing beyond that necessary for the first one here. We can just evaluate by substituting the, uh, the value that x is approaching in place of x. In B here, the limit of pi squared as x tends towards 0. Notice that pi squared has no x in it whatsoever, so it really wouldn't matter what x is tending towards. It could be 0, negative 100, 5 billion, it wouldn't matter. Um, the, the limit here would just be pi squared because pi squared is independent of x. In C, uh, as x tends towards 2, so if we substitute 2 in place of x here, here and here, in the denominator we get 0, in the numerator, we get 2 squared is 4 times 4 is 16, so we get 16 over 0. Now, there's no way that we can simplify this like we will some of the next examples. So 16 divided by 0 is undefined. So in this case, we would say that the limit of this expression as x tends towards 2 does not exist. Sometimes you'll see um, this written just with capital letters D and E. So that's an abbreviation for does not exist. Now d here, as x tends towards negative 3, if we put negative 3 in place of x here, well that's the um, denominator is going to have a value of 0, negative uh, 3 squared is 9, and then this would be minus 21 plus 12, that actually works out to be 0 as well. So we get 0 over 0, the indeterminate form. Well, what does it equal? So this is one of the examples where notice that the x squared plus 7x plus 12 will factor. So we're going to factor and see if this is going to simplify. So if I'm going to factor that trinomial, I'm looking for two numbers that add to 7 and multiply to 12. And uh, that's 3 and 4. 3 and 4 add to 7 and multiply to 12. So the trinomial on top will factor into x plus 3 times x plus 4. Now, if we put negative 3 in place of x for these x plus 3 factors, that's the part that's giving us the 0 over 0. So those will divide out. And so this simplifies to just x plus 4, and we can evaluate this now. If we put negative 3 in place of x, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, so the limit is 1, and it does exist. For the next one in E here, um, the limit of uh, this expression is a tends towards 0. Well, if a is tending towards 0, then this would be 0 in the denominator, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3, and if you square that, you get 9, minus 9 is 0, so we have another 0 over 0. So this is one of those uh, expand and simplify ones. Uh, there's no factoring involved here, but uh, we're going to expand the a minus 3 here squared, so that's 2 a minus 3 is multiplied. So um, if I multiply them together, a times a is a squared, a times negative 3 is negative 3a, negative 3 times a is negative 3a, another one, and negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Those two will combine to give you negative 6a in the middle, so that's a minus 3 squared. So just foiled out, you may have heard the acronym FOIL before. So that's, uh, and notice now this uh, minus 9 is still in the end here. Those uh, add to 0, so we actually just have a squared minus 6a in the numerator, and so this a will divide into both of those, giving us uh, a goes into a squared, leaving an a at the beginning, negative 6a divided by a is negative 6, so we can now evaluate this. We don't get a 0 over 0 anymore after those a's divide out. So 0 minus 6 is negative 6, 
and so that's the limit. The limit does exist. On to uh, e here. So if we put negative 2 in place of x, negative uh, 2 plus 2 is 0 in the denominator. Let's see what happens in the numerator. It's a little bit more complicated in expression. I'm going to bring my calculator over. So if I substitute negative uh, 2 in place of x here, and then minus, and it'd be in the brackets, it's going to be negative 2 plus 5, negative 2 plus 5. Then notice I get a 0 in the numerator as well. So I'd have another 0 over 0. Well, what does that equal? Let's find out. So this is one of the, um, uh, there's some expanding here, but then also some factoring. So let's expand the x plus 1 squared. So that's 2x plus 1's multiplied. So x times x is x squared. Uh, x times 1 is an x, 1 times x is another x, and 1 times 1 is 1. So, And we can add those two x's together to, uh, to get a 2x in the middle. Now, all this gets multiplied by 3, so this would be 3x squared plus 6x plus 3. So at the beginning here, that's where the 3x squared plus 6x plus 3 comes from. And then we have this minus. Uh, now, if we take the brackets off here, remember, it's like there's a negative 1 that distributes into the brackets. Negative 1 times x is negative x. And negative 1 times 5 is minus 5. And then we collect like terms. So there's only one x squared term. 6x minus x is 5x. And 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Now, so this, 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 this one is actually sort of a combination of some, we just did some expanding, but now maybe this will factor and the x plus 2 will divide out. So I'm going to factor the, uh, I'm going to do this one by hand here. Uh, so in order to factor this, I need to find two numbers that have a sum of the 5 and have a, and this is my abbreviation for product, just P-R-O-D. And a product of 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So the numbers that would do that are 6 and negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to factor this by decomposition. So I'm going to start with my 3x squared term. And I break the 5x into 6x minus x. So the 6 is positive. So it'll be plus 6x minus 1x. And then the minus 2 on the end there. Now this is factoring by grouping. So in the first two terms, I can factor a 3x out. And so if I do that, uh, 3x squared divided by 3x is just a plain old 1x. And 6x divided by 3x is a 2. So we have a plus 2 here. Close the brackets. In the last two terms, the only common factor is a negative 1. So if we factor a negative 1 out, Remember, you can put the 1 here. A lot of people don't, because uh, so, you don't need to. So negative x divided by negative 1 is a positive x. Negative 2 divided by negative 1 is positive 2. So notice what's in the brackets are the same in both cases. So that's the x plus 2 is now a common factor. So we factor that out. And so if we factor an x plus 2 out, the other binomial has to start with its 3x. And there's a minus 1 here. So that is the other factor. So that's what the uh, numerator expression factors into, x plus 2, 3x minus 1. So these x plus 2s will divide out. And so we're just lef lef left with the limit of 3x minus 1 as x tends towards negative 2. And we can evaluate that. We don't have a 0 over 0 anymore because of the simplifying. So putting negative 2 in here in place of x, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, minus 1 is negative 7, and the limit is negative 7. So let's get rid of this before we do the second last one. So this is the, uh, the square root conjugate thing I was referring to in the previous page. If In this expression, if we put 0 in place of x, we have a 0 on the bottom. Put 0 here, uh, the root, this would be just the root of 9 on, at the beginning, which is 3 minus 3 is 0. So we get a 0 over 0 again. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom. This is called the conjugate expression. It's the same thing as here instead of, but instead, uh, there's a, the opposite sign between these. So it's the same root 9 plus x at the beginning and the same 3 in the end, but there's a plus 
And of course, you have to do the same thing top and bottom where the expression has changed. So I'm going to write out this product on top in the uh, at the bottom here. And I'll write out what the whole thing is and I'll explain where the parts come from. So this is another foil, just a little bigger than this. It's still a two-term expression times a two-term expression. So the root of 9 plus x times the root of 9 plus x, just like, see there, those two roots are the same, just like if I multiply the root of 5 by the root of 5 gives me 5, what's underneath the root. See, this is what's underneath the root. So multiplying those two radicals together gives me 9 plus x. So I've, I've done this. Actually, maybe we'll go back to the pen. So I've done that. That's what I just underlined here. Now if I multiply this together, I'd be negative 3 times that root, which is, uh, I guess I've written that one second here, third here. And then this product right here would be this one. It really doesn't matter what order you write the two of them. And uh, a 3 times a negative 3 is the minus 9 the end. So notice that these, these two middle expressions are exact opposites. So they will add to 0. And so all we have left is just 9 plus x minus 9. And so that's what that whole numerator expression simplifies to when we multiply these two radicals together. And the two 9s, uh, 9 and negative 9, add to 0, so they're gone. It's just x, so it's just x over this. And so this, this x will divide into that x, leaving a 1 on top and 1 out front here. So since it's a 1 out front, I don't need to write the brackets anymore. So it would just be the limit as x tends towards 0 over 1, 1 over the root of 9 plus x plus 3. And I, I could now evaluate this limit if I put 0 in place of x here. See, the root of 9 is 3, plus 3 is 6 in the denominator, so the limit just equals 1 sixth. Uh, last one here in E. So again, I'm gonna, we would get a 0 over 0 if we put 0 in place of x, so 0 here. If I put 0 here, it's 3 halves minus 3 halves in the numerator. 0 again, we have 0 over 0, that indeterminate form. So this is uh, the case of where you get a common denominator to simplify this expression on top here. So I'm going to rewrite it. Well, there's... Uh, Right, I forgot my 0 over 0, so I'll get rid of that. I'm going to rewrite this with even a little more room here. So the two denominators on top here are x plus 2 and 2. And so to get the common denominator, I would multiply 2 and x plus 2. So basically, this one's going to be multiplied top and bottom by 2, and this one by x plus 2. Then we'll have 2 times x plus 2 in both denominators, and that's our common denominator. So in the top here, in the numerator, 3 times 2 is this 6. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 2 is minus 6. Now, in the denominator, you could leave this in a factored form or multiply the 2 by the x plus 2 to get 2x plus 4. It doesn't matter. You can leave it in either form. Okay. Now, notice that this 6 and negative 6, just like the uh, 9 minus 9, uh, subtracts to 0. So we get negative 3x over 2x plus 4 over the x. And I've in the denominator, I've written the x as x over 1 now because, you see, this is dividing two rational expressions. So I'm going to change it into multiplying. So I have this one in the numerator, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this one in the denominator. So these x's will divide out. And so when, after they divide out in the numerator, negative 3 times 1 is just negative 3 over our 2x plus 4 denominator. And because it's simplified, after those x's divide out, that was, that's the culprit that was giving us the 0 over 0. We can now evaluate this. If I put 0 in place of x here, 2 times 0 is 0, so it's just negative 3 over 4, or negative 3 quarters. And that would be the, the limit. So the limit does exist, and it's negative 3 quarters. So, um, so always try to plug in uh, the number first. And if you can evaluate the limit, great, you're done. Uh, but if you start getting the 0 over 0, then try one of these strategies. And after you've done a few, you'll recognize that when you see the roots, it's multiplied by the conjugate. If you have like a rational expression, I guess you're doing the common denominator. Uh, sometimes it's just algebraic expressions. You're factoring to simplify them. So you'll start, after you do some examples, uh, finding, uh, starting to recognize more what you should do in different circumstances. And that's the end of the tutorial.